All right, today we're looking at this lovely 2010 Mercedes-Benz B200. Uh, for our friends in the US that are watching this video, I'm pretty sure this car is a Canada-only car. And uh, consider yourselves lucky that you guys don't have this down there because they are not a nice car to work on. Uh, service info is very lacking, even at the OE level. Um, so it makes it a real chore to, uh, to get these things sorted out. Um, anyways, the issue with this vehicle today is uh, it is a no crank, uh, no start. Uh, it doesn't have communication apparently. So um, I think what we're going to do first is just hook the scan tool up to this thing and just confirm that we don't have communication. See what we don't have communication with. See if it's just one module or several modules. Um, I'm going to assume that uh, it won't because it won't crank that it can't talk to the uh, engine controller. So we'll just hook up the uh, scan tool here and uh, see what we got going on. Okay, now that we've got the scan tool hooked up, we're just going to go in uh, to Diagnostics and select Mercedes-Benz, standalone mode, and wait for it to find the vehicle. Okay, let's try automatic selection and see if it will uh, pick up the VIN here. It may not if we have a communication issue, but we'll see here in a minute. Okay, looks like it found the VIN, so we must have some sort of communication going on. Maybe it's just with the uh, engine module, but we'll see here in a minute. Uh, okay, so it's a 2010, so we're going to go as of 12, 2005. Uh, it is a left-hand drive, and oh, okay, I guess it's a 2011. My mistake. Customer told us it was a 2010. All right, so we're going to go into diagnosis here. Uh, let's just do an auto scan here and see what we can and cannot talk to. Okay, so right there, if you saw that, it was trying to talk to the uh, the engine controller and it could not. So. Looks like we have communication with quite a few different things here, so maybe it's just the engine controller that's offline. So if it's just the engine controller that's offline, that uh, tells me it could be something as simple as just like a power or ground issue to this module because uh, normally if the CAN bus is messed up um, you'll have communication issues with other modules I mean unless the CAN lines going to the uh, engine controller are like broken at the controller or something like that where it only cause communication issue with that one um, then maybe there might be something wrong with the CAN bus wiring, but uh, chances are it's just a power ground issue. And it really depends on how the network is set up too, whether it's a, a chain network or a ring network or what have you. So we can have a look at that if we run into CAN bus issues later on uh, into the diagnostic. Okay, I'm just going to pause this here. There's really no need to go through the uh, entire scan um, the main thing is we can't talk to that um, engine controller and that's going to be our issue why it's uh, not cranking. So we're going to have to check powers and grounds first on this thing just to make sure um, that we have uh, good powers and grounds to it because if we don't then um, it's not going to power up and it won't uh, allow the vehicle to start. So um, let's go get a wiring diagram here and uh, see if uh, we can find power and ground circuits and test them. Okay, so let's just uh, check Identifix here, see if they have it. And yes, it's just a two liter non-turbo. <laughs> this is, <laughs> yes, this is the problem that you run into with these B200s. There is absolutely no service info for these vehicles. Um, Okay, well, let's just uh, type it in here anyways. See if we can find something on here. 
yeah, there's nothing. Nothing that's going to be of any help to us. So let's try. Uh, let's try all data here. Okay. Yeah. So see, this B200 is a Canada-only car, so that could be why there's not much service info. Uh, yeah, so there is a little bit more here, but still no wiring diagrams. And that's really what we need are just the diagrams. Um, let's see if we have anything in here. Yeah, see, there's only... I don't think these are diagrams. No, they're not diagrams, so... Okay, well, that's not great. Um... What we're probably going to have to do with this vehicle then is uh, go and get the OE uh, service info, which is available to us. Um, we'll have to uh, see if we can buy a subscription for that and gain access to the uh, Exentry portal, um, which is basically their online um, service info. Um, usually takes a day or two to get access to it for us up here. Um, so we'll uh, go do that and continue on the video once we have access. Okay, so here we have the um, the OE service info portal. Um, figured I'd save you the pain and frustration of having to find this wiring diagram um, because there is quite a learning curve with this uh, with this uh, software or this program. Uh, it took me a while to find this, but we did eventually find the wiring diagram. So um, I'll just zoom in here. Um, here are our uh, powers and grounds to the ECM zoom out one more. Um, so we have one fused input here. It looks like it's a uh, dark green wire. Um, two more fused inputs here. Um, a red and blue, sorry red and dark green, and then a red and blue here. Uh, and then it looks like we have another fused input that comes from a relay here. Uh, and then we have our three grounds here. Um, and then our fused input for that uh, relay. So um, I think what we're going to do first is just check to make sure these fuses aren't uh, blown or anything like that. Make sure they're good. Make sure we got good power there and then we'll uh, go and find the wiring at the uh, engine control unit. Um, so let's start with that and uh, see what we got on those fuses. Okay now we're at our uh, fuse block here. Um, I've written all the uh, different fuses down instead of going back and forth to the wiring diagram. So the first one is uh, fuse 32, uh, 7.5 amps. So that's this guy right here. And I don't see. Oh, we do. We have 12 volts there. We got 12 volts there. Just didn't have a good connection. Okay, so that fuse is okay. That ground isn't though. It just popped off. Okay, move on to the next one now, fuse 43, which is this guy here, and then 44, which is the one right above it. Um, so we have ooh, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, and nothing. Okay, so these fuses aren't powered up. Uh, 43 and 44 so um, we're gonna have to see what the problem is there um, if I remember correctly those are the uh, ones that are fed power from the uh, I'm not sure what relay it was but they're fed power from a relay so we're gonna have to go back to the wiring diagram and see what that relay is and uh, I guess check it and see if it's uh, getting power to the relay and if it's being controlled properly Okay, back at our wiring diagram here. Um, these are the two fuses that aren't powered up. Um, this one here, let's start with this one here. Uh, fuse 44. Um, we have our relay here, K100 is the, I believe, let's see, they got a legend here, the relay and fuse box, and KL is vacuum pump relay, okay? Uh, well, let's see if we can't find a uh, diagram that shows the relays here. I think these are links. Yes, they are. Okay, so here's the relay block. Um, all right, 
Alright, well. Let's see if we can zoom in and figure out what circuits are for that relay there. Uh, doesn't really tell you. Well, you know what, let's go find that relay block first and we'll throw the U-Activate in it and just see if it's being controlled properly and uh, kind of go from there, make a decision from there. Okay, so after searching through service info, I found that the relay block is uh, behind the carpet there in the passenger side footwell, so um, not sure how much uh, of a pain that's going to be to get out, but I'll do that off camera. Um, get the relay block uh, accessible and then we'll uh, continue on. Okay, so that wasn't fun. Um, got access to the relay block there, and I just, uh, I already uh, put the U-Activate in there because it's kind of hard to do one-handed, um, especially while you're holding this floor back. Uh, so I'll just kind of explain what this thing does here. Um, you got a little LED light there. That's the uh, control side of it, and then this is the uh, switch side. Um, so you can put your voltmeter in either one of those and see if you have good ground, good power, depends however it's controlled. And then uh, same thing on the bottom there, you can put your two uh, leads in there to see if you have good power on uh, one side of the switch and then when you flip the switch see if you got good power on the other side. Um, it also bypasses the relay, uh, you click that down and it just feeds power across the switch side um, without having to control it there. Uh, so I am just going to set that there. We're just going to turn the key on. Now, if it's being controlled properly, that red light should come on. Like that. Okay. So, it's being controlled properly. Um, let's see what happens. Huh. Interesting. I just heard a fuel pump come on. I don't know if you could hear it there, but let's see if this thing starts. <laughs> All right. So... I'm pretty sure this thing just has a bad relay. Wouldn't that be something? You wait a month for service info only to find that it's a bad relay. Yeah, okay. Well, that pretty much tells us yeah, we got good power coming into it uh, and then that the circuit is okay because it's getting uh, power to the ECM there. So that tells us the switch side is okay and uh, it appears here that the uh, control side is working properly. So. I'm just going to get a different relay, plug it in there, and see if uh, see if it'll start. All right, let's take our U-Activate out of here and throw in our... Get out of my way. Throw in our uh, good relay. All right, now let's see if it'll start. Uh, yeah, I hear the fuel pump prime. It's going to start. There you go. So, it looks like we just had a bad vacuum pump relay. Um, I don't know why they could label it the vacuum pump relay. Um, that can kind of mess you up if uh, you're not looking. If you're looking for something like a, a, a ECM relay and they label it a vacuum pump relay, it could uh, lead you down the wrong path. But anyways, um, that's just Mercedes for you, I guess. Um... So, at the end of the day, all this vehicle needed was this relay. Hey everybody, please take a second and hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please follow us on social media.